Well, welcome to day two of Walking the Tabernacle Walk, uh, our daily reflections for this week. And uh, we started yesterday, and uh, today we're going to be looking at the bro the bronze altar, the sacrifice for sin. And if you want to read more about what the bronze altar looked like, you could go to Exodus 27, 1 to 8. But we're going to look at Hebrews 10, 10 to 14. And it says there, it says, and, and by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Christ once and for all. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. And again and again, he offers the same sacrifice which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one sacrifice, he was made perfect forever, those who are being made holy. You see, the image of the bronze altar in the tabernacle is striking. It was a place of bloodshed where sacrifices were made to atone for the sins of the people. And every time an offering was laid upon the altar, it was a vivid reminder of the cost of sin and death. Reflecting on this, we are brought face to face with the reality of Christ's sacrifice on the cross, which was the ultimate fulfilment of what the bronze altar symbolised. So as we contemplate the sacrifice of Jesus, we are struck by the enormity of what he endured. The cross was not just a tragic event, it was the culmination of God's plan to reconcile humanity to himself. So Hebrews 10, 10 to 14 emphasizes that through this single offering, we have been sanctified, set apart as holy. And the significance of this truth is overwhelming. Jesus, the sinless son of God, became the sacrifice for all our sin so that we could be free from the power of sin and live in righteousness. See, understanding the weight of Christ's sacrifice forces us to confront our own relationships with sin. Jesus' death was not just a theological concept, it was an act of love and declaration of freedom. Yet, we often find ourselves grappling with the old patterns of sin, forgetting that we've already been liberated. And the freedom that Jesus provides is not just about being saved from the penalty of sin, but also from its power in our everyday life. So in practical terms, this freedom manifests in several ways. It's living in grace. The bronze altar reminds us that we do not have to earn our way to God. Jesus has already made the perfect sacrifice. We are called to live in the grace that he provides, free from the burden of trying to achieve righteousness by our own. And the grace gives us the courage to approach God with the confidence knowing that we are accepted and loved. Knowing the cost of our redemption, we are motivated to reject sin in all its forms. You see, the freedom of Christ offer, offers us not a license to live however we want but an invitation to live a life that honors and the sacrifice that he made and this means being vigilant uh, against the temptations that seek to pull us back into bondage and to actively choose righteousness it also means embracing new life the sacrifice of jesus opened the door to a new way of living and we are no longer defined by our past mistakes or failures, but instead we are defined by Christ's righteousness. And this new identity really empowers us to live differently, to pursue holiness, love others deeply and walk in obedience to God's will. So as we meditate on the significance of the, bros the, the, bro uh, brass, the bronze altar the, and uh, Christ's sacrifice, we are reminded of the immense love that God has for us. See, he provided a way for us to be reconciled to him, not through our own efforts, 
but through the perfect offering of his son. And this truth fills us with gratitude and inspires us to live in the freedom that Jesus purchased with his blood. So Father, we thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus, of Jesus Christ. May we live in the freedom and grace that his sacrifice has granted us. Let's reject sin and, em and embracing the righteousness. Help us to fully grasp the depth of your love and the significance of Christ's offering. And let us understand and shape our actions, thoughts and desires so that we may walk in the newness of life that you have given us. Amen. So day two is looking at this bronze altar, but this is just one of the pieces that we will encounter in the outer court. And I like to call it the place of the church's ministry, but also the place of the body. And as you go on in this uh, study, we'll find out that there's three sections to this. And uh, one will be, is the holy place and the other one is the holy of holies. So I'm really looking forward to sharing more with you tomorrow and, uh, and uh, well, I'll see you then.